Hi everyone. In this video, we are going to discuss the proof of this theorem. Okay. So we have a matrix space XD, A is subset of X. Okay. What will I do? I will draw the diagram simultaneously so we can easily understand the concept. Suppose this is a matrix space we have. Uh, they have given one set A, which is subset of X, right? If P belongs to A dash, that means if P is a limit point of A, then we have to prove there exists a sequence of points of A, none of which equals X and it is converging to P. This thing we have to prove. Okay, so let us start with a given information. What we have? We have P belongs to A dash, that means P is a limit point of A, right? And we have to find a sequence of points of A, none of uh, them is equal to P and that sequence is converging to P, okay. So P belongs to A dash, so that means I can write P is a limit point of A. So we are familiar with the definition of limit point, so let us write the same definition here. The definition is therefore B, P comma R minus singleton P. Okay, in case of uh, limit point, we remove that point from the ball. Intersection A is not equal to phi and it is true for every R greater than zero. Okay, this is the most important thing. So that set is non-empty and it is, it is true for every R. So that means you can take R is equal to one, two, three, whatever, one by two, one by three, whatever you want, you can take, but it must be positive then for that R this intersection will be non-empty. What will I do? I will take R is equal to 1. Okay, initially I will take for R is equal to 1. Then what will happen? We will have B, P, 1, since our radius is 1, minus singleton P, intersection A is not equal to 5. So let us try to understand with the help of diagram. What we are doing, we are considering a ball with center P radius 1. So let me draw a ball with center P radius 1, okay. We are removing that center P from that ball, then the intersection with A is non-empty. You can easily see in this diagram, many points are there. So the intersection is non-empty. Intersection is non-empty, that means there are some points. So definitely we can select one of them. I'm selecting one point. Therefore, we can write, we can choose, I am choosing one point x1 belongs to that intersection b p1 minus singleton p intersection a. Let me show in this diagram, this is x1. I have chose, uh, selected one point x1 from the intersection. Now what will I do? I will repeat the same story for r is equal to half. I am reducing the radius. I'm taking R is equal to half. That means you will get a ball with center P radius half, small ball, get it? But again, the intersection will be non-empty. Since this is true, the intersection is non-empty for every R greater than zero, okay? So let me write all these things here. For R is equal to one by two, obviously it is greater than zero. So we can write B, P one by two, R is equal to 1 by 2 minus singleton P intersection A is not equal to 5. Again, intersection is non-empty. So we can choose one more point. We can choose X2 belongs to B P 1 by 2 minus singleton P intersection A. Okay, so now uh, let me show in this diagram. So we are selecting one point X2 which lies in this intersection, right? We can repeat the same thing for R is equal to one by three also, since one by three is greater than zero, so we can write for one by three also. Uh, there is no more space to write, make a screenshot of it, then we will go further. So now for R is equal to one by three, okay, let me write for R is equal to one by three, which is greater than zero. So I'm putting R is equal to one by three, then from star we will get B, P, radius is 1 by 3, minus singleton P, 
intersection A is not equal to 5. That means we are reducing R and it is 1 by 3 now. So, we will get a comparatively small ball. But again, the intersection is non-empty. So, you, we can select one more point and we can call it as X3. So, let me mention, therefore, we can choose one point X3 belongs to ball P 1 by 3 minus singleton P intersection A, right? We can do the same thing for R is equal to 1 by 4, 1 by 5, 1 by 5, 6, 1 by 7 and so on. We can continue this process. Okay, it is true for every R greater than 0. So, that means generally we will write, what we will write? Uh, see, in general, for R is equal to 1 by N, we will have ball with center P radius 1 by N minus singleton P intersection A not equal to 5. So, we can choose, we can choose one point xn belongs to ball with center p radius 1 by n minus singleton p intersection a okay so we can select a point again so uh, it is true for every n belongs to set of natural number okay so in this way we are constructing a sequence this process will never terminate since you can take any natural number 1 by 100 1 by 1000 1 by 10000 so each time you will have some point which lies in the intersection. In, we started with x1, x2, x3. In this way, we will get x4, x5, x6, x100, x1000 and so on. So, we are constructing a sequence getting like this. Did you notice one thing by observing this diagram? See, all these points are moving towards P. All these points are moving towards P. And the same thing we want. No, there is a sequence converging to P. We want a sequence. We are in a search of sequence which is converging to P. All terms of a sequence are from set A, actually sequence from uh, points from set intersection. So, obviously it is in A. So, we get a sequence of points from set A, sequence of points of A. Each time we are removing that center of ball, that means singleton P. So, no point will be equal to P. So, that is why none of which equals P. So, all conditions will get satisfied. Simply we need to put all these things in a proper way. So, let us do, okay, this one. So, let me write, therefore, and so on, and so on, and so on. That means we are continuing this process. Uh, therefore, we get a sequence Xn such that, such that, that Xn belongs to ball P, 1 by n minus singleton p intersection a. So, you know intersection means common part. That means that xn lies in the first set as well as in second set. So, therefore, xn belongs to ball bp 1 by n minus singleton p and xn belongs to a. That means xn is a sequence of points of a. Let me write more clearly, okay. So, therefore, Xn belongs to ball BP 1 by N. Xn not equal to P since we are taking point from a ball, puncture disc. That means we are removing the center from a ball. So, that is why Xn is not equal to P and Xn belongs to A. Okay, this thing we got. Again, there is no more space. Make a screenshot of it. Then we will go further. Okay, so let us write all these things in words now okay so therefore we get a sequence xn okay i'm writing the same thing sequence xn of points of a since that thing we have got here xn belongs to a it is true for every n belongs to set of natural number basically okay points of a none of which equals a equals p sorry none of which equals p none of them is equal to p and and xn belongs to b p 1 by n all things we have got got 
oh, just now we have to prove that sequence converging to p so you know that let me tell you one thing suppose we have a ball with center p radius r and there is one point a which lies inside a ball then we say distance of a from p is less than its radius if the same point lies outside ball then we say distance of a from p greater than the radius so what we are getting getting that xn lies inside a ball so therefore we can write distance of xn from center of ball is less than its radius same logic i use getting uh, let me remove this one distance between xn and p is less than 1 by n but 1 by n is most popular uh, sequence getting and we know that everyone knows that uh, it converges to 0 as n tends to infinity that means d of x n p is bounded above by 1 by n which converges to 0 and distance cannot be negative so it is bounded below by 0 understood bounded above by 0 bounded below by 0 that means obviously that d of x n p also converges to 0 d of x n p converges to 0 as n tends to infinity what it means distance of any sequence from any point p goes to 0 that means basically that sequence goes to p it means that sequence xn converges to p so in this way we proved all conditions are satisfied sequence of points of a none of which equals p and sequence also converging to p in this way we proved okay make a screenshot of it then we will stop thank you see you